The Substance, directed by Coralai Farjad, stars Demi Moore, Margot Qualley, and Dennis Quaid. A fading celebrity decides to use a black market drug, a cell replication substance that temporarily creates a younger, better version of herself. This is a movie I've been highly anticipating basically as soon as the marketing for this movie started happening. It features an insanely intriguing trailer that promised something that looked depraved and insane. Along with this, it started getting a lot of buzz from festivals, which is usually a good sign. So now that it's finally landed in theaters, here's what I have to say about it. Firstly, I want to talk about the performances, starting with Demi Moore. While I've only seen a select few of the woman's works, I feel like no matter how deep into her filmography I'll delve into, I don't think I'll ever find a better performance from her, as I genuinely think this is the best performance of her career. She does a really good job of create. She does a really good job of portraying this realistic depiction of a woman who's been so broken down by everyone around her at this point in her life. She's so reliant on what people think about her, and the way she displays this bit desperation for attention really comes across as as sad more than anything, but she pulls it off so well here. There's moments here where she also displays a great deal of unhinged moments too. I think my favourite moment that she does is a segment in the movie where she's getting ready for a date and she's constantly going back and forth to and from the mirror as she's constantly second guessing herself. This somehow blends an element of comedy and deep rooted sadness here and she manages to convey this well that kept her performance really engaging. Not just in this moment, but basically from start to finish you're instantly pulled in by her performance and she does a really incredible job. Margaret Wally plays Sue, who is as the plot describes the better and younger version of Debbie Moore's character. While the effects department didn't bother to make her look like a younger Debbie Moore, I think it's best that they decided to keep her looking like herself, as this could have been very distracting, especially in the latter half of the film. She displays this great, fun, unhinged energy throughout all of her scenes, which made her easy to be such a hateable character as we follow her more and more. Quali is able to pull off this bitchy type of character, not to an extent to where it becomes grating to watch in any way, but you completely understand why she'd be hated, especially by Demi Moore's character. The dynamic they share with each other is really fun to watch, both in escalation of jealousy between each other, going to the extremes that they do in this delves into some really surprising places that makes you question who you should be sympathizing with and who you should be against, especially when the line of morality between the both of them become really blurred. Dennis Quaid is definitely one of the highlights along with Demi Moore in this. Anytime he's on screen, he makes an effort to really chew up the scenery and he always steals the show no matter who he shares the scene with. He gives this good balance of portraying himself to be funny and unnerving all at the same time, especially more so in the latter half of this movie because there are many moments here where he's so uncomfortable with the performance he brings which is escalated by the way he's shot in many of these scenes which I'll delve more in depth when I talk about cinematography. Regardless of what type of emotion he evokes through his performance, he's nothing but entertaining anytime he appears in the film. He's having it up all the time and it always feels like he's trying to one-up himself in every scene he's in. He does a good job at playing this type of sleazy guy role without outright doing anything malicious on screen or in subtext of the film itself. Yeah, at the same time, you can tell from his introduction he's not a good guy, but whenever he comes into the film, I couldn't help but smile or laugh, whether it be genuine or in a more uncomfortable sense. The main thing I want to get into before I talk about anything else is I want to immediately give praise to the cinematography in this film. Almost every shot is perfect. From start to finish, the cinematography is incredible. There's a shot early on in the film that quickly made me realize I was in for a wild ride. In this scene, we essentially see Dennis Quaid's character pissing. There's no sugarcoating it, but in this scene it's essentially meant to be a close-up, but it's one of the most uncomfortable close-ups in the film as it's done with what looks like either a spherical lens or something similar at least to what looks like a fisheye lens, which makes the guy almost look like he's peering through the lens itself. I thought it was such a creative way of conveying this sense of unease very early on. Another fun piece that looked really visual appealing was a scene where Demi Moore's character is curled up with the field position in her shower and the camera pulls out and keeps going and going to the point where it looks like it could be a bird's eye view and it's more so looks like a corridor instead of being angled from the ceiling. Obviously, as I mentioned early on, we have an uncomfortable close-up, but that's basically what this movie is based on, as there's so many uncomfortable close-ups and extreme close-ups that do a great job at making you feel uneasy whenever they appear again and again. The film also uses a very bright colour palette, which isn't too out of the ordinary for a horror film, but the colours in this film are so oversaturated to lock you into a false sense of security, similar to how a show like Utopia would do the same thing. That show 
show having these bright saturated colors contrasted with this brutal gritty violence which this film does really well here too. I was so impressed by the cinematography in this I need to shout out this movie's director of photography Benjamin Kraken he did a really great job here. This film has such a great display of practical effects which surprisingly do take a back seat in this in a way. It's mainly reserved for the third act but it leaks true in the second act too showing that you won't have to wait too long for it. In terms of the gore and violent visual effects the film opts to treat it in a sort of escalation. In the first act it's more reserved for procedural type of gore. In the second we're greeted by more general violence and very oppressive prosthetics and in the third act finally it goes completely off the rails and shows off some of the best practical effects and prosthetics and everything to do with practical effects alone that I've seen in a modern movie in such a long time. Along with this the third act is what holds the most blood in the film and when it finally starts flowing it feels like it just doesn't stop. I know I'm parroting the popular opinion but genuinely in terms of modern cinema especially this year I think this film features the most insane last 40 to 30 minutes I've ever seen. If you go see this as a horror fan and the drama aspect of it isn't something that works for you, it'll be insanely worth it for those minutes alone. I was smiling from ear to ear with how gloriously disgusting it was. The balls to show this movie in mainstream cinemas for general audiences to stumble in on is amazingly funny to me. I'm so glad there's still somewhat a spark in Hollywood that chooses to fund things like this because it was such a special experience seeing this style of filmmaking on the big screen. The screenplay is insanely strong too. This film is a scathing critique on the laughable beauty standards which are presented onto specifically women in the modern age. While I would critique this aspect in other movies, I think what I'm about to say works here since it's present from start to finish, but basically in terms of delivering its message, this film shows no interest in being subtle. It's heavy handed and speaks about its themes very on the nose, but from the acting and the camera work, everything is so over the top and exaggerated that you just go with it. And you can easily excuse it since it feels on brand for this film to pull this off in that way. It's very witty in terms of its humour as I was watching it, it almost felt like this is Demi Moore's equivalent to Birdman starring Michael Keaton. As that movie goes, as that movie gives commentary on an actor not in the height of their career anymore trying to find relevancy and there's an aspect here which is done in a similar way too which was interesting to me as I was watching. While this screenplay could have been developed before the public knew about it, I feel like the substance itself could be in reference to commentating on the Ozempic epidemic that seems to be prevalent in Hollywood at the moment, as that's a drug that mainly is related to weight loss, but the thought of maybe an older actor wanting to look better using substances seems to be very relevant here, so I commend the filmmakers for adding this aspect in, whether that was their intention or not. Overall, I loved the hell out of this movie. It's incredibly unique and feels fresh to the horror genre, despite having clear influences throughout the whole thing. There's echoes of Cronenberg and even some Lynchian elements in the, the whole movie, which is great to see, especially in a modern film. I think Farja did a fantastic job in the director's chair, as this is only her second directorial feature which makes it even more impressive considering how basically every aspect of this film works from the acting, the screenplay, the style, the look, the humour, the horror, just everything is fired on all fronts and works so much for the type of film that this is. I had never walked out of a film as satisfied as I did walking out of this one and my only hope is that other people that go and see it have the exact same feeling. I'm giving The Substance 5 stars. This is an incredibly well acted, cleverly written, nasty, vile, gross, disgustingly depraved piece of horror cinema that still manages to be so fun from start to finish. I don't think I've seen such a great body horror movie like this in so long, so people that are fans of that subgenre will definitely get a kick out of this one. It's unnerving, it's funny, it's slimy, and it's a film that you'll never forget once you've seen it. I can only describe this film as an incredible cinematic experience that absolutely deserves to be seen on the big screen, and honestly with a high energy audience, as the third act is bound to provide some visceral reactions from anyone that sees it. This is so deserving of the hype it's gotten, and it's worth your time. Go see it on the big screen as soon as you can.